Good afternoon to all. Uh, let me go through it. Last time we have gone through the one of the service of bulk computing, that is SAS, which we have seen. Okay. Now today we are going to see something about PaaS and uh, us as well as, and we are going to see some other parts of it. Now let's go concentrate on PaaS. PaaS is nothing but the platform as a services. I'll go through an example which we have gone through it. Sorry, last time. Uh, uh, what we have seen is that we have gone to a hotel, we have ordered a food, and we are going to make money and just walk out of the food. That is your SaaS. We haven't used we haven't used any services of ours. Everything is available. We just logged in. We use our the services and just walk out. Whereas in past we ordered a food, which comes to our home, but we are using some of the material from our house. That is our plates, dining table, and everything, lights and everything. The same way also. Uh, Infrastructure is given with us, but uh, the thing is that tools, developing tools, and everything which will be given to you. Environmentally, web applications from the organic perspective, back end management. What do you mean by is that all the material, the surface, and everything will be given to you? Available to you. Rely on the cloud provider tools, relying on the cloud provider for developing tools, infrastructure, and operating systems. Very simple way. Uh, even as past means entire ser server space infrastructure concern are handled by the vendors. Servers and other things are handled by the vendors. That means like your space, food and everything what I told you, you are using in your home. The same way that you are getting uh, uh, software and other material to you, you are going to use to develop, uh, to develop an application. Both There are differences between both serverless computing and platform as a service, pass backend architecture, keep the entire backend vis invisible to you. Keep in mind, there is a lot of difference between serverless and platform as a services. Both keep the backend architecture which are invisible to you. You are going to see what do you mean by serv uh, serverless and platform as a service, pass. You know, next slide. Uh, this is what it is example here. Uh, this is your pass. This is your ser serverless and more control over the development environment. Applications has the, has to be configured to scale automatically. Application take a while to sign up. Whereas here less control over the environment. Application scale automatically. Application code only execute when invoked. Take a while to sign up. Once you sign up, you can take it. It take a while. Yes, there are some common things which are there. If you draw a pie diagram, you'll get that the development has to write an application code, as I told you, and no server management. There is no server management. As I told you, the development, the software is given to you. You need to write a code. Uh, whereas in our previous SaaS, nothing was given to you. You just log in. You get the data is available and everything. Whereas here, yeah, the infra infrastructure is not given. The software and other things are given to you. You can able to use it. This is serverless. Remember, what are the difference between serverless? Less control over the environment, more control over the environment. Application has to be yes. There are same automatically. They can able to scale up. Application code only execute when. Whereas we need to sign up for a cloud, then only we can able to get it. The common difference between both of them is that developer only have to write an application code, no server management is needed. This is the difference between serverless and another one. Let's go to other slides which are available here. There are some parts which are given to you, uh, infrastructure of pass, which I say one is developing tool which is given to you. Here, vendor. Or offer with a variety of tools which are necessary for the software development. Then middleware uh, between the software and the operating system, which is needed for it. That we are going to see what is middleware, uh, VM software, and other software, which is also a uh, topic for it, which we are going to cover it. A software that's built between the user and application machine. For example, we allow keyboard, mouse, and the other things also. Uh, virtual machines is a operating system. Yes, it is given to you. You know what you mean. Operating system database, which is given to you, and pass provider is a management service store or physical data center, or purchase them from SaaS provider. We need to purchase them. These are the things which storage is available there. 
So major thing is that this one, developing tool, middle way which have your interaction between your keyboard, other things and the software, what are the different softwares you are using and the operating. These are the three things which are major for it and sometimes we will give you for the database other things. These are the infrastructure, infrastructures which are provided by the PaaS. Now there are some advantages which are given to you. Reduce the coding time, yes, reduce the coding time. As we have already got platform which are already available to you. Availability, yes, it is available at any given time. Only thing is that you need to log in with your mobile phone, tap or whatever. Platform has provided your development team new capability. While you don't need to add on work, a specific task, you don't need to add anything a software or something like that, or any hard disk, which you are going to see how you can add a hard disk or how you can upgrade your hard disk or something like that, or your platform or your software or any needed services, which you are going to see in later part of your, our curriculum. Uh, this is the part of it. And tools, yes, you can pay as you go. Tools are available. You can add any tool and you can delete any tool which you don't need. Pass, eliminate the expenses of complexity of processing and use software. You don't need to have any software at any time. The tool which are provided by the cloud provider manage all those things. These are all things. These are major thing is that software is provided and uh, tools are available to you. You don't need to give above um, what kind uh, invoices or something like that. They'll come down and everything. These are the major tasks of it. Now let's move on to other part. Infrastructure. As as a services. Uh, as I told you now, the third part of it, we have already seen SaaS, we have already seen PaaS, now we are going to see AS. What do you mean by AS? It's something like that where you're going to invite all your friends to your home and you're going to cook your food and you're going to serve them. So all the expenses are done by you. Infrastructure is a service directly computed infrastructure which serve, which server, manages and monitor over the internet. It is modified scale up, yes. It is a server, it is a managed, it is a monitor all through internet. It can be modified, scale up and scale down as per the demand of the customer and as per that they are going to pay. And more important, there is a service level agreement which is there in your unit third uh, for as well as for what is called second third years. Uh, uh, for the uh, final year, it is in fourth unit. So service level agreement, which is very good agreement. There is an agreement which is there, which we need to go through it. SAS, as I find it, where I stand for infrastructure and AWS stand for as services. So remember, as is nothing but I is infrastructure and as as a services, where all the services are provided to you on the internet, like server, managers, uh, uh, sorry, how to manage the servers, monitors, and everything. And we have got a service level agreement for it. The complete management is done by a cloud service provider. This is cloud service provider, which is already do all those things. Only thing is that we need to download that configuration and everything. So we have got a data center, we have got an infrastructure, the service provider, you need to download an application, then these are the users who can able to, with the help of application provider, you can manage this one, you can manage this one. So everything is available to you with all the data server, software and everything. Only thing is that you need to download this software and you need to monitor with the help of or you need to configure it with the help of this uh, software. These are the part. So let's take example, there are physical data center as provided, as provided you, provided with a managed lab data center, typically around the clock that contains the physical machines required to power the various level. We are going to see how the power abstract on the top of that and then made available to you on the web, yes. Computer as typically understood, virtual computers, windows and everything which is available to you with the, through help of virtual machine, that is windows, operating system, all those things. Hardware, yes, data storage is always available with the help of a hardware. You don't need to bother about it. Then there is other part of it which we are going to see, yes. Servers, the server are maintained by the cloud, provide totally managed by them, the servers. You don't have to worry about your hard disk or something like that. It is already managed by, uh, sorry, servers are managed by them. And there are storage. Storage, you don't need to worry about. There are three types of storage which are very important. Remember, we need to ask about this one. Uh, we have already discussed about servers, serverless and PaaS. Now we are discussing about three types of storage. That is block storage, file storage, and object storage, which is managed by them. Cloud. Block storage sometimes refer as the block level storage. That is nothing but it's a that you store the data files 
that is used to store a data file on storage area network. SAM or cloud based storage environment that is used to store. Block storage break the data into blocks that store that the block into separate pieces with a unique identifier. So if you have got 100, uh, 5000 GB or 1 terabyte hard disk, a example of 1 terabyte hard disk, I broke down into 100 GB into pieces, uh, blocks, and I'll give them an identifier and I'll store them in different pieces. That means you can store that block across different systems and each block can configure with the different things. So each block storage is nothing but if I have a poly card about 100 GB, 1000, 1 terabyte, then 100 GB, 1, I can store it. I'll just write it with the help of a pen. I've got it 1 terabyte. I divide them into 10 blocks. 1, 2, 3, and each block is given as a 1, and it is separated. It is one block is separate, two blocks is separate. This is what block storage is there. This is that something about block storage. Then we have got file storage. File storage is something like that we store in our call it, uh, your files. The file storage, file based storage, hierarchical, your computer, your hierarchical methodologies used to organize this and store the computer hard disk where you store a files. File are organized in a folder, folder is organized in a hierarchical manner. You have got dictionaries, then directories, then you have got in the directories, you have got folders. In the folders, you have got files. And in files, you can have stored data. Correct? This is something about hierarchy. Uh, so these are the file stored folder, and the folder organizes other hierarchy of dictionaries and subdirectories. To look at the file, all all of all you or your computer system need to have a path. There is a path which is able to look at it. If I able to find any of the uh, directory, I need to go to that uh, path uh, from computer or something like that. Then I can go to subdirectories. Then there are files in that files the data is stored. Object storage is an architecture which handles large amount of unstructured data. Remember unstructured data. Unstructured data which is cannot be organized easily. That is relational limit database, rows and columns. Today's internet communication, emails, videos, photos, other things are all unstructured data that are being has to divide. That is being stored in object storage. So these are the storage classes in what we call pass as, as. Now let me move on to other part. Yes. Now let me move on to this one. I'll go for the technology stand. Uh, doubling the period, yes. If you see storage every 12 months, you're going to double the storage. Bandwidth every nine months, you're going to. What low is this? Means I'm, I'm going to increase the bandwidth. Every computing capacity is every 18 month, 18 month it is going to increase bandwidth. Let's take an example. In 1985, we have got, see the differences, 56 kilobytes and 2008 terabytes. So what I mean to say, how the tendency is going on, how we are using our cloud and how the data is stored in all these three, what we call configuration of SaaS, PaaS and everything. I'm also showing you the trend technologies, what is going on today, uh, data capacity, to Today we have got terabytes, what do you call computers, 990s, that was our supercomputers. That used to have that much of terabyte hard disk. Now we have got PCs with terabytes. This is what it is. The future, we can able to tell you massive scale. Yes, it's going to be massive scale on demand. What we are going to see, pay as you go, on commitment, anyone can able to access. Yes, anyone can able to, can, can able to access this part. Data intensive nature, what was MB now becomes terabyte, later on becomes petabyte and exabyte. Daily, we have got forensics, logs, web data, X3 humans have data, other things, what we call Wikipedia is compared to only 10. What was that now? It's been increased a lot. 
and new cloud programming paradigm came into existence which we have think hadoop mac reducers no sql no sql other things have high accessibility and easy to programmable lot of open sources are available to you for futures in the today's cloud that is futures of new cloud what is there i am saying you combination of one or more of this give rise to a novel or unsolved distributed computing problem in cloud now if i combine them there is other problem that is going to be solved other things now i'll tell you how the facebook is as facebook we have got 30k users into now 60k in 2010 I'm just giving you about 2012 data, which I found on the web page or something, which is not there on a, on your textbook. Microsoft, New York Times, uh, 2008. It was just think of total runs 18, 180k. Yahoo, it was 2000, uh, 2009, 100k split into cluster of 4000. Then AWS Elastic. Uh, It was 4,000 machines. Now 8 crore machines. eBay 50k machines. HP 2012 380k machines. Google a lot. These are massive scales which I am going to use. These are the technologies which I am going to see. If you see, this is what the inside server look like. And then we have got this is financial servers, some highly secure servers which are available in the cloud of which nobody can able to access it. Only few person. And then how you are going to have this is offsite where you are going to pay for it. And this is for the servers which is going to say. So what we are going to see? Look at here. We are use uh, climate change. This is used for this one. This is now what happened? We are using solar energy. That is the way of yes, the energy released by it. We are not calculating that part. But imagine that one. How we are going to use? We are not going to use the technologies. that are available we are using for the solar power power annual out water storage by it equipment manager if it is low it is very good power total power facilities power by it equipment power low is very good google uh, it has for this much of these are all off site and this is on site now i have already discussed with the private cloud and public uh, uh, public cloud or private cloud in my previous things um and i'll see these are summaries which i have discussed about the things that these are all purposes which you have to use application data front end middleware operating system visualization and other thing and in saas yes application is there data is there run time is there middleware is there operating system virtual machine server storage networking storage everything was given to you means what Servers and everything, but runtime data is applications. Once you write the application, you get all this. Whereas here, runtime, middleware, and everything is given to you. These are the services given to you. These are the services you are. Here, yeah, everything is given to you. These are the differences. Remember to you. SaaS, we get everything. That's what I told you in a hotel. This you call a sigi. You cook the food, and this is all everything so i'll stop here i'll just see what i can able to add in the next my next class thank you